I like to say that I have four jobs. I have my day job teaching dance, although mm -hmm. pandemic, what are you going to do? I treat YouTube like a job. I treat TikTok like a job. And I treat my freelance VO like a job. Yeah. And uh, so I am busy all the time. I actually have been working seven days a week for the last year. Mm, wow. I only took Mondays off as kind of like a day off to recharge a month ago. Mm. And so I've been working hard all the time trying to keep up with expectations. I've gone through my burnout when I took my first Monday off. Yeah. I had a full on panic attack in my shower for an hour. Yeah. I mean, uh, if you all of that stress that had been bubbling up had been, uh, had to be let out somewhere. And I'm finally recovering a month later, That's but good. one thing I'll note is that that was the expectations I heaped on myself mm -hmm. because thankfully, at least in my parasocial situation, I have, n I always, uh, there was a scene, a YouTube video with Brian David Gilbert. Are you familiar? No, actually not. I've never heard of him. BDG is a big creator. He works for Polygon, I think it is. And he has his own channel. And at one point, he grew a mustache. Mm. And the fans did not like this change to his face. Yeah. It was not what they were used to. Mm. And at one point, he taped on a plastic over his mustache at the beginning of a video said, uh, I shaved my mustache, then ripped off the plastic. Just kidding. You're not my friend and you have no say over my bodily autonomy. <laughs> and of course, a group of his fans was like, yeah, you go BDG. You're in control of your own life and we love you for who you are. Yeah. And a contingent of fans was also, hey, I thought we were friends. Fuck you, dude. Yeah. And so part of what I try and do is I try to manage expectations. Mm, okay. I try to make sure everyone knows I am here. I am going to create content. I create it because I want to entertain you and I'm making what I like. Otherwise I wouldn't. But if you expect something from me that isn't in my views, that's just your expectation. And you need to check yourself on that. You need to see why you expected something that wasn't there. Hmm. That's good. I think yeah. everybody needs to do that, really. No, I like how you, you've you actually been directly addressing it because th I think there is also this other concern that from the creator side, there's responsibility that if you're leading people on, who especially are very vulnerable, like, for example, a lot of younger people, like growing up, I had a lot of hard times making friends. And I think that's also why I started to experience like parasocial relationships. Like that's when I was really invested in like Vlogbrothers and Easy Waiter and things like that. Um, but I feel like you addressing that directly kind of helps kind of prevent that and it kind of reality checks people. And thankfully, we're also becoming smarter as consumers. Yes. Yeah. When you and I were younger, this kind of thing wasn't studied. No. It didn't. It was all new. The Internet was new. Having the ability to have millions of people watching you when you're just a normal dude wasn't a thing. Mm -hmm. So... With time, we are now in like the second, third, or fourth wave of YouTube, TikTok creators, and we are gladly learning from the past mistakes, as are the viewers learning from what's happened to past creators. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Because, I mean, like, for example, something that I am not sure how to feel about, I think uh, over the past year I've been thinking a lot more about this, but, like, um... For example, my, I have little cousins who are like eight, I think now, um, and they're heavily into TikTok. And for a while, that's why I really thought TikTok was like a children's thing. Um, so I think that partially kind of really skewed uh, my perspective on TikTok. Because, I mean, I thought it was basically like musically. I thought it was just this trendy thing. It'll disappear in a year, whatever. Um, but thankfully, I guess I was proven wrong. Like It seems like they're actually, would you say there is a mature audience or it really is just teenagers and things like that? There is definitely a mature audience, mm -hmm. and I, I only came on in the pandemic, mm -hmm. but that it seems like the pandemic and most of people my age losing their jobs in some way forced a lot of us onto the app just to find something novel to do. Mm, okay. And yeah. so the algorithm is very good at catering to what you want to see. Mm -hmm. And so for me, TikTok is a lot of millennials. Mm -hmm. It's 
Hank Green explaining a lot of things. Yes, I'm a fan as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's very big on TikTok. Oh, I didn't know that, actually. Um, yeah, and his TikTok cr- comment is fantastic. He actually likes it a lot because it's a different format the same way I am. Mm. And it gives you freedom to do things that you wouldn't put in a YouTube video. Mm. Um, I have do, 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 I have millennial memes, like people making jokes about Homestar Runner, things that I remember. Oh, wow. Get yeah. my nostalgia on. Um, I've got a lot of leftist politics because I'm that kind of person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, I know. I'm trying to start a commune production studio. How could you have guessed? <laughs> and my feed is very catered to me in a way where I don't see a lot of dancing kids. Mm. Like it's, I thought it was musically and within like a day of using TikTok, I was tier steered toward where I would fit in. Mm. So it's very heavily pushed off. There's like witch talk, alt talk, punk talk, uh, LGBTQ TikTok, hmm. which I think is separate because I think there's gay TikTok and lesbian TikTok and trans TikTok as well that are like separate from each other, but co-mingling. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's horror art ARG TikTok. Uh, there's a trend of people uh, going to an abandoned place and creating their own ARG where I get tagged in those constantly. If if they have a story, I'll cover it. But yeah. most of the time, it's just people walking around and not doing anything. And I'm like, this isn't worth <laughs> covering. Yeah. So, yeah, it it definitely, I'm not sure what it was before the pandemic. But now, if you are a person, TikTok is worth looking into. Um, there is still the privacy concern. Yes. Now, yes. the and this gets into, I think you want to talk about the TikTok ban and that privacy concern. Do we want to pivot to that section? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because that's basically how I found out more about TikTok and started paying more attention to it. Was through a lot of just hearing about that in the news. So, uh, I am not a political person, like a politician. Mm-hmm. I am not a science or tech person. I am an actor, singer, content producer, and that's about it. So, mm-hmm. all I know about the privacy issues that are very important is that there were things from your phone being taken and given to possibly given to China. And I say possibly because people are saying TikTok was scraping data. Mm -hmm. They are saying TikTok servers are not, uh, the Chinese government is not privy to what American TikTok does. Uh, But there are people who don't believe that. It goes back and forth. Yeah. So what I know is that the stuff that TikTok was scraping, at least what I was told, is not very different from what Facebook is spying on you about. Mm, Okay. And so as someone who is on Facebook, as someone who is a content creator and has essentially said goodbye to my privacy in the first place, (laughs) it really didn't hurt me at least from what I know, to stay on TikTok. Mm. But what it did is it benefited me because it's the, by far, the largest platform I have with the most people. Yeah. And so, in my eyes, it was give up a little privacy to the Chinese government, which, I mean, speaking politically, the Chinese government is one thing. The American government, up until now, has been its own problematic mess. So, if... You're giving it to the Chinese government. You're giving it to the American government. You're giving it to every government that's spying on us. I, uh, so that concerned me less than this is an opportunity to reach a much wider audience and make the thing, the projects I want to make happen. Mm -hmm. And so when Donald Trump went to ban TikTok, I was sitting at about 250,000 followers and my YouTube was still at about 15K. Mm. And I was like, oh my God, what if this actually goes through and all of this growth I've achieved, like it was like striking gold and then having it taken away. Yeah. I think I might have quit content creation if that had happened. Wow. I was that like crestfallen. Mm. And I don't know if I would have because I had five years of work doing it, but I wasn't going anywhere on YouTube. So, thankfully, it did not come to pass, and I don't have to know what I would have done in that situation. Yeah. I mean, that's a big reason why I I didn't 
it, like invest my time into TikTok because I was like, I heard about it because of the news and also just through some friends actually getting into it because of quarantine. Um, so it was really like a big debate of do I want to invest hours and hours and hours or should I just wait for the storm to pass, um, which it thankfully has. I took one Saturday where I literally sat on my couch, downloaded every TikTok video I had and re-upload it to a rival app that would still be up and running if TikTok was taken down. Mm. So that was a waste of a Saturday. <laughs> but it doesn't hurt. And just in case. Yeah. And uh, I was just pushing people to YouTube. I was saying, hey, if TikTok goes, I'm on YouTube. Head over there. Mm. Do it. Do it. Yeah. That's something I feel like is really, really hard. Um, is really trying to move audiences from one platform to the other. Um, seems like you're doing a pretty Definitely. decent job, though. The concept, the fact that your YouTube's doubled in size, though, um, through TikTok. I'm actually pretty shocked uh, that that much people have come from TikTok. And it's it's upkeep. Once a week, I'll make a video about it. And usually those videos are lesser seen because less people are interested. Mm -hmm. But a certain percent of the viewers, 5 to 10% for each video, will make the jump. And bit by bit, it'll grow. Like, this week, I made a video saying, Hey, I will post a public link to a Site42 Discord server if we get up to 100k, if we get the silver play button. Mm -hmm. And off of that, uh, that video was seen by 25,000 people, and 2,000 of them jumped over to YouTube. So in one day, we boosted 2,000 subscribers. Wow, that's great. And so... And so that's going to boost YouTube ad revenue. Um, oh, and this brings us to the final spoke of the question, making money on TikTok. Yes, yeah. So uh, TikTok, up until recently, only had the creator marketplace. Mm -hmm. The marketplace is a brand deal marketplace where brands will reach out to you through the TikTok app to make a deal on this amount of money for X amount of videos. Hmm. And you can't use copyrighted music. You have to use the commercial option music only, stuff like that. Okay. But that was really the only way to leverage your TikTok audience into money until this summer, where TikTok just took a big chunk of money. I think it was like $200 million at first. Hmm. And they're planning to inflate it to a billion dollars over the next year or two. Wow. And they establish what they call the Creators Fund. Mm -hmm. The TikTok Creators Fund, you join it once you have 10,000 plus followers mm -hmm. and like another metric. And then based on your views, likes, comments, shares, watch time, and I think follower growth is actually a metric as well. Mm. You will get a certain cut of that money. Mm. And for most people, it's something like 50 cents to a dollar a day. Mm. Uh, I have at my best somehow gotten up to like 20 bucks in one day mm. on like a particularly viral day. Yeah. And so it fluctuates up and down, up and down. Uh, there is a lot of controversy with the Creators Fund because there are claims that people have joined the Creators Fund and then their views have plummeted. Hmm. Almost like TikTok is throttling creators fund creators so they don't have to pay as much. Yeah. Now, I cannot find evidence of this. I have not seen any. Hank Green himself has said that there's no evidence for it. Mm -hmm. Pardon me. Uh, Hank Green has run an experiment of going on the fund, going off the fund, checking his average views and not seeing a difference. Hmm. It is so common for creators to see a drop in views and think it is an and think it's an outside source rather than their content being less interesting this round. Mm -hmm. And superstitions and witch hunts like this happen all the time. Yeah. Which is why I haven't left the fund. There was for me a huge, huge dip in views and such that happened right after I joined the fund. Mm -hmm. But in the last couple of weeks, it's up again. I'm having a wave of good stuff. So it's here or there. It could be the fund is doing something or it could not be. But at this point, 
it's a little extra change on TikTok. The people going to YouTube are getting ad revenue over there, so that's a little extra change. I have so many more followers on TikTok, and business-wise, if you're thinking about it like this, every follower is a 0.001% chance of getting a new patron. Mm. And patrons are consistent, and it keeps you going without the threat of ad revenue or the creator's fund. Yeah. And so, as a content creator, your main goal, if you want to build something like I'm trying to build, has got to be to, di- to diversify. Mm-hmm. You need to get ad revenue. You need to get view revenue. You need to build a Patreon. You need to get merch. You need to get a Kofi. You need to do everything you can to have easy routes to support you. Yeah. And then every new follower is a roll of the dice like any percent roll in a D&D game. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's an interesting perspective. Yeah, I didn't know actually about the creator fund. Um, how, re- how recent is that? Is that like the past few months? Yeah, I think it was like probably August is when oh, it started. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, that's pretty recent. Yeah. Um, and the creator's fund, it keeps track of your cash for a month. And then 30 days after the month ends, you're allowed to withdraw the crap cash Hmm. so august money is accrued then you wait through september accruing september money and at the end of september august money is withdrawable Hmm. so after the first month of skipping you are now able to monthly withdraw funds all right so yeah it's similar to youtube in a sense in that way um yeah it's just ad revenue versus whatever metric tiktok's doing it basically works out the same yeah 